because only in the temple altar can be erected and to have the altar then and then only they can bring an animal slain it offer it on that altar and ask Yahweh to forgive their sins and the people's sins so this angel came out of the altar another one now the one that came out of the altar it says in verse 18 who had power over fire so the one who came out of the altar had power over fire the one who came out of the temple had a very sharp sickle in his hand but the one who came out of the altar had power over fire and he cried with a loud cry to him who had the sharp sickle who came out of the temple in verse 17. So the one who came out of the altar cried out to the one who came out of the temple with the sharp sickle saying, thrust in your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth for her grapes are fully ripe different language now the one who looked like the son of man sitting on the cloud who had a sharp sickle he thrust it in onto the earth for the earth was ripe he said reap it but now this angel who came out of the altar said to the one who came out of the temple thrust in your sharp sickle for the grapes the clusters for the grapes are ripe now her grapes wow he's talking in a feminine way her grapes are ripe the clusters of the vine of the earth uh, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth for her grapes are fully ripe so the angel thrust his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and threw it into the great wine press of the wrath of God. Do you have time? Good. So how are we? Are you okay? <laughs> so let's speak in a simple language. Okay, don't look at the screen. Look at this good looking bishop, man. My name is Bishop Murray. I'm single and available. I'm hot, you're not. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, here we go. This angel that came out of the temple had a, a sharp sickle. Another one came out of the altar who had power over fire. Said to the one who came out of the temple, thrust in your sickle because the clusters of the earth the grapes are ripe, you need to gather the clusters, for her grapes are fully ripe. Please pay attention. This is focused on the Israelite nation in the 21st century. However, I'm talking about the Great Tribulation. The Great Tribulation is focused on the Israelite nation in the 21st century, however, the great tribulation will cover the whole globe. Everyone will be affected by it. Christians, non-Christians, every human being that will remain and go through the great tribulation will be affected by it because it entails World War III nuclear weapons. So now, I'm not scaring you. Be strong. You have Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Who cares? I wish I died tomorrow. I died today, I wish. I want to go to my sweetheart. What am I doing in this sick world? I want to go and be with my sweetheart. I can't wait. So nothing worries me. And so should you, if you truly believe in the Lord. So now, the Lord Jesus is the good shepherd to two branches of his beloved church. He is the good shepherd of the Old Testament, church and he is the good shepherd to his new testament church now the old testament church is resembled by the vine tree the new testament church is resembled by the bride of the groom so we are the bride the old testament church the israelite people are the vine tree not the bride they are the vine tree 
Now, the Lord came in his first coming to the Old Testament church first, the vine tree. The Old Testament church at the end of chapter 12 uh, of the gospel according to Saint Matthew, they said, they called Jesus the head of Satan. He is Ba'lizabub. He is Satan. They called him Satan. So they said, we don't want you. They rejected Christ in his, on his first coming. He turned his face to the pagan world to establish his church in the New Testament. And he started his ministry in chapter 13 by getting into the boat at the shores of the Sea of Galilee. Now the boat is the establishment of the church in the New Testament because we are resembled by the ocean Israelites are resembled by the land so he entered the boat in the sea water who are the waters us pagans worshippers of idols false gods there was only one nation that worshiped the true divine God when the true divine God came to them they crucified him so this God turned his way to the pagan world to gather as many people as possible from the world and bring them into the New Testament church, which is us. How long has the Good Shepherd been doing this, gathering people of the world? 2,023 years. bit funny you know when the Lord grabbed gathered his disciples and he took him to Mount Olive uh, the, uh, the Mount of Olives he went up to the top uh, top of the mountain and then from the Mount of Olives he ascended to heaven he said to his disciples I'm going to prepare a place for you and I'm coming back soon so they waited See, when God speaks, you will never fully fathom what he is really meaning and saying. To their minute intellectual capacity, they sort of um, put it in their head and came to this conclusion. Oh, well, he's going up. He's going to come back another, what, half an hour, one hour, two hours. We'll wait. There is no going downtown so we're gonna wait so they waited as the Lord is going up and then the clouds covered him and they he disappeared then angels came down he said you Galileans what are you doing here oh they said well our Lord Jesus said I'm going up to prepare a place for you guys and I'm coming back shortly so we're waiting for him to come back and take us to the place the angels looked they didn't laugh but they said <clears throat> go home all right he's shortly it's been now 2023 years imagine what would have happened to their necks <laughs> look it up for 2023 years for a day is like a thousand years to God and a thousand years is like a day so the Lord came to the New Testament he gathered people of from the world and he's still gathering why because a time is coming the door will be closed in the face of the New Testament church there will be maybe still churches around you'll go and pray no more Jesus hearing you he will say I don't know who you are why because he needs to fulfill the promise which he gave to our father Abraham who is the father of the Old Testament church Abraham Isaac and Jacob these are the fathers of the Old Testament he gave a promise to Abraham I will visit your son my, by my son I will visit your children in the end of times so on his second return what will the Lord do the door in our face will be shut in order to be open to the Jewish people he needs to bring them back so how is he going to bring them back in the end of times through the great tribulation 
through the great tribulation. So now they're dying to build the temple on Mount Moriah. But that's the second holiest place to the Muslim world. In order to build the temple, you need to bring everything down. The Dome of the Rock, Masjid Al-Aqsa, and build the temple. You're asking for a lot of trouble. Therefore, another superpower will come up and will make this possible for the Jews. Not America. Another superpower. America won't do that. It's not for them to do it, someone else. Now, the one who came out of the altar had power of a fire. But the one who came out of the temple had the sharp sickle. And then the one from the altar said to the one from the temple, please thrust in your sickle and gather the clusters for the grapes, for her grapes are fully ripe. Now he uses John the Beloved here by the power of the Holy Spirit and inspiration. He uses her grapes. Now the word her can only apply to the church because the church is the woman and Christ is the man. You see, man and woman. No man and man, no woman and woman, naughty boys and girls, get alive. For her grapes are fully ripe. Now her is a female, feminine. The church is the female, the woman. For the Christ is the man. Now her grapes, why her grapes? Because the Old Testament church is represented or resembled by the vine tree. Now her grapes are fully ripe. In verse 19, so the angel thrust his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and threw it into the great wine press of the wrath of God. This wine press is the wrath of God you see, in the first coming of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he says, I have gone through the wine press on my own. This is in the book of Isaiah. I have passed through the vine, wine press on my own, meaning Jesus was pressed on the cross, for he is the grape that was crushed on the cross. And when that grape was crushed, what blood came out red color comes out of the grape his blood gushed out of his body he is that grape that got crushed on the cross and his blood was shed on calvary on the cross to save and redeem everyone who receives him as lord and savior but this wine press is the wrath of god this wine press, which is the cross, is the mercy of God. Do you see? So there is the wine press of the wrath of God, and there is the wine press of the mercy of God. Jesus crushed on the cross is the wine press of the mercy of God. But in the end times, it will be the wine press of the vengeance and the wrath of God. No more mercy. Last week, the one who looked like the Son of Man, who sat on the cloud, thrust in his sickle, and reaped the earth. The Lord is coming soon to close the door in the face of the New Testament church, us, to open the door to the Old Testament church of the end times, the Israelite, the Jewish people. When he closes the door here, he'll open it in their face. He will open the door in their face. A lot of them will come back, but those who refuse, they will go through the wine press of the wrath of God.
How is the Lord Jesus going to bring the Jewish people of the 21st century back to him? Through the sickle. The sickle that was in his hand and he thrust it in. What is the sickle? Nations. The Lord is in charge of all the kings of the earth. Meaning, who appoints prime ministers? Who appoints, who appoints prime ministers? The Lord. Who appoints presidents? The Lord. Who appoints kings on earth? The Lord. No one else. They can manipulate the voting system. They can play with the numbers and put Biden instead of Trump. But it is the Lord who is in charge at the end. And if you believe in this, you will see the glory of God in your life, my dear friend. For no secret societies can put anyone in power unless Jesus says so. This is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, for he is the only true God revealed in the flesh. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again. The reason why Biden won the election for, you know, which was rigged, 100% it was rigged by the secret societies. Why did the Lord allow it? He is, I want America to hear this. The people of America, which I love, which I love, which I love, and I pray for. The Lord allowed Biden to be your president to send a very powerful message to all of you, our beloved people of America. The Lord is saying, just like Biden forgets his name, you, my people, have forgotten my name. I, the Lord. America, in recent years, they've drifted so far and away from Christ. It is not a joke. America is on the verge of collapse. But Trump will win 2024 election no matter who tries to stop it. Trump will win it. Jesus is bringing Trump back because he still has time with the world. He wants to bring more people of the world because the door will be closed soon. And he wants to refurbish his church because his church has gone so far away from him. The church has lost a plot. Church leaders are not working for Christ. They are working for Satan. Church leaders literally denying their master. Bowing before Satan, allowing evilness to infiltrate and shape the church which Christ himself built on the rock with his own precious blood. Shame on us. Judas Iscariot is much better than all of us put together. Because Judas Iscariot was a man. He'd never denied Jesus Christ. He went to the Jewish priests and he said, listen guys, this is the Messiah. I believe and I know this. I will hand you over the Messiah. Grab him and kill him. Because he thought for himself, Messiah is prophesied about he cannot die. So I'm going to face, I'm going to let him face death. This is the only way the Messiah will start acting. I've been talking to him for the last three years saying, Lord, We've been a punching bag to the Egyptians, to the Romans. Enough of slavery, enough of slavery. Give us kingdom, give us our freedom, give us our kingdom on earth. He said, if someone slaps you on this cheek, give him the other. If someone drags you by force a mile, go with him another one. Enough, enough slapping, enough in, in being enslaved. You, nothing was working with you, Jesus until I'm going to sell you with 30 pieces of silver and I'll make you face death. When you face death, since the Messiah cannot die, you, you will have no other choice but to wipe the Roman Empire from the face of this world.
That's why he went and gave Jesus to the Jews. Because he wanted the Messiah to act. He did it purposely believing this is the Messiah. Today, we are not as a man like Judas. We are not men. Judah was a man. Church leaders today are cowards. Cowards selling their master. Selling their master to have their own pleasures. Red belt in karate. So my beloved, the Lord will use certain nations to discipline the Jews. The Lord will use certain nations to discipline the Jews. The, the great tribulation is where this superpower will flip on the Israelite people. Where they will have a treaty with this superpower and they'll become very good friends. But afterwards the superpower will be against the Israelite people and will decimate them. Her grapes are fully ripe. The Old Testament is the vineyard, is the vine tree. I want to read you. Actually, I'll come back to it. So what will happen? Thrust in your sickle and gather the clusters for her grapes, her, the church of the Old Testament, which is the vine tree. Her grapes are fully ripe. The first time the Lord will discipline the Jews, using a superpower nation. When that superpower nation overcomes the Israelite people and conquer the world, that superpower will come back and say, I am God on earth. You know, when, when you succeed in something, you become kind of uh, boastful about it. Oh, look at me, what I've done. Look at me, what I've achieved. Look at me, what I've built. Look at me, what I've conquered. You know, when you achieve something at a very big, large magnitude, all of a sudden, you become so much of a show-off, you lose track that you are nothing but a minute piece of dust. So that superpower, after overcoming the Israelite people and conquering the whole world, they will come back and say, we are God on earth. God will teach him a lesson and send an angel from the altar who has the power over fire and decimate the superpower. Just like he did in the Old Testament with certain people, he will do it in the end times. He is the same God. The Israelite people of the Old Testament, every time they walked away from God, God brought a nation, striked the Israelite people, disciplined them, taught them a lesson they never forgot. When they were actually disciplined by that nation, they woke up and repented to God and said, please God have mercy on us. When they came back, God struck that superpower or that nation which he used. Because that superpower in the end times is already, is a pagan one. It's a beast. Godless. More than likely, it is the Chinese regime supported by Russia. More than likely. There are some amazing Chinese people. Man, I love you. You're so cute. Huh? Ni hao. Ho ho. Man, I love you. Till now, I'm trying to learn how to eat with those two chopsticks. 
but I'll, I'll, I'll grasp it one day. There are some wonderful Chinese people, but the regime, the regime is godless, godless. Their symbol is a dragon. What is the dragon in the Holy Bible? Satan, isn't it? <laughs> and they go and play the dragon in the streets. Dum, 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 dum. China has now a stronghold in the Middle East. So as Russia, see, they go together. I don't want to give you too much information, right? Yeah, you probably already know. You maybe you know more than me. I don't know. Probably you do. Um, China and Russia will always be together. Russia is the brain of China. Russia is the military power of China. They are the one who give them all the technology, weaponry. It's the Russian people are with the brains. What happened in Lebanon was a deliberate act where they blew that port. That wasn't just something that it was stored for about six, seven years and all of a sudden with some friction and miraculously poof. No, that was, that was a bomb very close. The way it, it formed that onion thing in the air, it, exactly like a nuclear uh, bomb going off. But it was not a nuclear, but it was a very powerful bomb. They blew that port deliberately. Russia is in Syria. America wants to be in, Amer in Lebanon. And poor innocent people being killed for the politics of sick in the head, so-called governments. Sick in the head. What kind of a sickness is this that you want to conquer the world? Okay, you've conquered the world, and then what? You're, that's sick. You'll never be content. It's like a little kid. The first time you buy him a little toy, they're content. After a little while, they get fed up. I want a bicycle. And then I want a motorcycle. And then I want a car. And then I want a plane. And then I don't want nothing. I'm bored. Well, go and kill yourself. I don't know. It's a sick world. Sick world, my beloved. Sick. The end is the grave. What conquer? You conquer nothing because you are, you have nothing. It is God, Jesus Christ, who gave you everything and made you someone special. Without Christ, all of us are nothing. So they have a big stronghold in Syria, the Russians. And yes. America wants to have a stronghold in Lebanon. It's strategic. They have a massive port right, of the, right on the Mediterranean Sea. If they want to bring ships and things and trades and everything, it's nice and easy. You see, the world is preparing itself for the finale stage because, my beloved, the great tribulation is focused on the Israelite people. Where? Israel, Middle East. Anybody home? World War III will begin from the Middle East. Not here, not in Fairfield. It's going to be in the Middle East and Israel. This, there will be nations coming to really give Israel a hard time and then after they strike Israel that superpower will say I am God the Lord will send them an angel out of the altar who has power of a fire he will burn that superpower before they blink their eyes oh man 
If Jesus wants to be angry, don't stay here. I can assure you this. Or if he turns the other cheek, run for your life. But you can't run from the Lord. He will get you. He will get you no matter where you are or who you are. He's your creator. Who are you trying to escape? The Israelite nation, till this moment, have seeked a kingdom on earth. And to their way of thinking, the way we can conquer earth, money, Habibi. Honey, 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 make me money in this big wide world. Money talks. Money gives you power. Power gives you control. Give you control. The Israelite people, unfortunately, ever since rejected Jesus Christ of Nazareth, they have put their hope on people, not on God. They may say we pray to God, we pray to Yahweh, we pray to, the, to Elohim, to the one and only. You can say that, my dear friend, but you're putting your hope in men, not in God. And that man is a dead corpus like everyone else. Don't put your hope in men. When Great Britain was in its glory, they went and held on to Great Britain lest Great Britain give them Israel as a country. And that was the Balfour Treaty in 1918. That Balfour Treaty said Israel is a recognized nation. And in 1948, they went in to Israel and landed at Tel Aviv Airport. 600,000 people landed in Tel Aviv Airport since 70 AD, they came back home in 1948. And in 1967, that six day war, Israel now is a recognized country in the UN. Who is the UN? America. <laughs> When Great Britain went, United States became the superpower. The Jews went and said, we're American now. So they held on to America. America, you defend us. America, you give us this. America, we want everything. America, give us the temple. America won't do that. You see, because neither America nor anyone is in control. Jesus is. Israel, you need to come back to Jesus. And until you do that, no one will come to your rescue. No one will give you nothing because only God can. Not men. Not a superpower. America will go. Pray that 2024 election is the decisive election for America to stay or to be gone once and for all. Has America done a lot of naughty things and bad things? Absolutely, yes. But remember this, the day America goes, Christians are also gone. That's another sign. It's not that America is protecting the Christians. No, 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 no. But that's a sign from the Lord. Trump will win 2024 100% because the Lord still has little time left for the world to be delivered from eternal death, eternal hell, and to be with Satan. Jesus Christ is still winning souls from the world. Satan is trying to put an end. Open your eyes, my beloveds, my beloveds, young men and women. 
don't, don't just be so blind and so naive and say, all I want to do is just have fun. I want to go out and party. I want to go to the club, to the pub, to Star City Casino. I want to fly. I want to go on holidays. I want to go to restaurants. I want to dance with somebody. I want to drink. I want to change my looks, blow up my cheeks, my lips. Enough. I beg you, enough. No time. Jesus is coming back. The world will be engulfed with fire. God covered the world first with water. In the end, he will cover it with fire. He'll burn it. Because of the sin of mankind, humanity has gone totally evil. Evil. Even in the church. I beg you. I'm not saying don't go out at all. But I am saying one thing. Please hear me out. I'm saying whatever you do. Let Jesus be with you. Let the Lord be with you. Don't walk away. Don't fall for the temptations of the world. And all you care about is you. How you look. How you dress. What you eat. What you drink. And how you travel. In what kind of a car and a house you live and drive. Enough of materialism. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. For the time is at hand. We need to come back and kneel before the Lord, praying, begging Him for mercy, begging Him for forgiveness, begging Him for His loving kindness, for the time is near. The time is near. And I can assure you, it's not me talking. This is not me. I leave the church, I'm someone else. Because I know myself. This is not me. Don't ever come to church and say the bishop was preaching. No, it was the Lord talking through this useless, hopeless piece of wreck called Bishop Murray. I'm nothing but a sinner. I am a nothing. It is the Lord. It is the Lord. His name is Jesus Christ. I'm licking the dust that is stuck at the foot of his sandals. Because this is cleansing me now. It's cleansing me. Jesus is amazing. Every time I feel so down and so at the edge, my sweetheart comes. Every time with that fail, my sweetheart comes. What party? What King's Cross? What Star City Casino? What clubbing? What white powder? Step on it. Step on it. We need to be close to the Lord and His holy church. We need to be close.